Hey everyone, Dave and Alex from Corso here. I'm drinking my coffee. Alex is not drinking my coffee. Not drinking. It's very disappointing. It's the third one that we've shot in a row, and he's still not drinking coffee. So I what's the series my, called? I could get my water bottle. Though. <laughs> water changed his life. Link below. Ignition Explained. Yes. This is our series describing all of the ignition modules. Mm -hmm. uh, we're starting with the core modules. Mm -hmm. Then we'll go into the set of modules and then dig into some of the third party stuff. Yeah. And then probably come or cover some of our own modules by the time we get through the list here. Yeah. Basically, lots of people ask us lots of questions on ignition modules. And this is our gift to everyone who has those questions, and so we don't have to ask Shane these questions anymore. Yes. And we're talking about Tag Historian? Yes. So Tag Historian is how you enable Ignition to send tag history data to a database. Mm -hmm. It also allows you to use the store forward functionality. Yes. Uh, you will get historical functionality with just the vision module. Mm -hmm. But it locks everything away in the internal database, and if you want to grab that data for use in reports or that sort of thing, that's mm -hmm. much more difficult, if not impossible, to do. So Tag Historian simplifies that. Can we say what a tag is for everyone that doesn't know? Sure. So tag is a, basically a data point. So mm -hmm. if you have a tank mm -hmm. and you have a level sensor in your tank, mm -hmm. the, the level in the tank would be a tag. Yeah. So it would be level transmitter dash 105 mm -hmm. would be your tag name and you could represent, you know, let's say it's zero, zero to 100%. Okay. You would store that or create that tag in ignition and mm -hmm. read that value and then you could display on the screen what your tag level is. And when we talk about tags at like the lowest level, we typically talk about like tags coming in from PLCs. Correct. And other things like that. And is that where tag came from? That's what I normally tell people is where yeah. tag came from. Yeah, because in, in, uh, in the PLC, it's called a tag. Yes. Or, I mean, that's from the old days of PLC fives and whatnot. It's been tags. Uh, we know lots of you still have PLC fives. We love you. So, that it comes from the PLC okay. world. If you were coming from a programming world, you could also think of it like a variable. Yes. Yeah. Uh, conceptually the same. Mm -hmm. the same thing. Uh, generally, they're tied to some form of real world equipment. Yeah. Or or interpolated or calculated from something like that. Um, the other thing the tag historian module gives you is the ability to use a lot of the built-in graphical components mm -hmm. and uh, tag history bindings mm -hmm. in Ignition, so you don't have to know how to do a SQL query mm -hmm. to pull data out of the database. You can yep. go in and select a date range, what t historical tags you want to look at, mm -hmm. and what type of uh, aggregation you want, if you want min, max, average, just the raw values. Uh, if you want to grab, say, 100 data points instead of, let's say, 10,000 data points for a day, you want to interpolate and grab yeah. just 10 of them. Uh, the tag history will also allow you to set up parameters for um, compressing and interpolating data. So you could set up a bandwidth. So if your values change, if you're looking at the temperature mm -hmm. and it changes from 72 to 72.1 to 72 and just kind of oscillates yeah. and you only care when it gets to 73 mm -hmm. you can set up a range that will store less data mm -hmm. then it dumps everything out to your database then it is accessible from mm -hmm. there uh, it also enables automatic partitioning of your data so it will create the tables automatically for a weekly or a monthly or a yearly or you don't have to uh, generate the tables at all yeah, you can just do a big table, which I wouldn't recommend. Um, and then you can also get into the tag history splitter functionality, which we'll have a blog post on that. It's really blog. awesome. Uh, we learned about it at ICC, at the Oil and Gas Collective meeting. I think it was Chuck? I don't remember. We'll, we'll, we'll link to it in the blog post. It was amazing. Yeah, but I would say tag historian... If you're looking at other software packages, that would be comparable to like a process historian. Mm -hmm. uh, popular ones, you know, would be like an OSI Pi system. Yeah, that's kind of the 
large scale industry standard that you might see. Um, that's sort of Ignition's version of that. They also are getting into some cloud based historian things that they released at ICC that yeah. we will get to in further videos. But yeah. generally, I would say in the series of the videos that we're filming out, mm -hmm. Vision, everybody starts with. Yep. SQL Bridge is the next yep. item on the list. And then Tag Historian is. I don't think we've done a system without a Tag Historian. Or I don't know why we would, because... We're talking about doing one, and John and I had to look really hard to see the functionality that was going to be lost as a phase one of a project. Yeah. And the big things are, if you've got a PLC, or are looking to use store and forward, you have to have Tag Historian. And then, the one thing that Ignition's Tag Historian doesn't offer, that things like Pi, OSI Pi, and some of the other third-party historians do offer is compression. And I know we've talked about this a lot, yeah, internally and, and with customers, and the difference of compression versus not compression is not a huge issue at the moment because storage is cheap. Mm -hmm. How many, gig, how many uh, gigabytes of storage or terabytes of storage do you walk around with on a regular basis? Probably a couple. Yeah, I, I've got 10 with me in my backpack right now. External. Uh, Some of us have problems. And compression would be the actual data that gets stored. Mm -hmm. um, Ignition's historian stores the tag data in a database table yeah. in a raw format. Yep. Uh, OSI Pi stores it in a different file that's compressed. Mm -hmm. And at the Oil and Gas Collective, they ran through a lot of uh, analysis tools mm -hmm. and things on how much does compression save and for probably 99% of customers, that is not even a discussion point that needs to be worried about. Yeah. Um, if you're looking at multiple millions of tags and storing data every 100 milliseconds, then maybe it would matter. Maybe. But performance-wise, the, the tag historian from Ignition works great. Yeah. I've never run into an issue where that was the limiting factor on the project. No, and we were at the Oil and Gas Collective, and there were talks of, like, two to three million tags currently and up to 10 million tags total. And that blew away the, this is a few hundred thousand mm -hmm. tags and that's gonna be a big project. And you, you could through the SQL bridge module and assuming you have licensing on like an OSI Pi system, yeah. pull data into Ignition through mm -hmm. the database connection directly. Which we have done. We have done that and then you have to get into managing the OSI Pi mm -hmm. connections and setting up a tag in OSI Pi is a pain compared to doing it in Ignition. Ignition is basically a checkbox. Yeah, and it's expensive because you're paying about a dollar a tag mm -hmm. for something like that and you lose the functionality of unlimited everything. Now you have to worry about tags. And the big thing is you have to wonder, let's say, You've got you bought five thousand tags. You have to wonder if that five thousand and first tag is worth the next package, which may be an additional twenty thousand tags, which may be an additional twenty thousand dollars. Yeah. And just to add in my fun anecdote for this video, you could, in theory, build everything in the tag historian, probably minus store and forward, although you could come up with a solution for that. Using the SQL bridge module. But it would be so much more costly development time-wise than just buying the oh, yeah. module in the first place. And that's a big thing with so many modules is, could we reinvent the wheel? The answer is almost definitely yes. But the, should we do it? The answer is almost definitely no. Exactly. Yeah, it's infinitely cheaper to just buy yeah. the module and you get all the built-in functionality and it works really well. Because um, I think it's like 5000 bucks. It's something inexpensive. We'll, we'll put the dollar sign down here. But that's... And it's unlimited tags. tags. Yeah. And, I mean, it's, it's the ignition model. Yeah. Once you buy it, you have it for everything you need. And this is applicable to, like, full-blown vision and, like, like a standard licensing. Mm -hmm. The edge licensing has a built-in historical component that yeah. gives you the seven-day window or whatever. The edge licensing is completely different. We'll talk about that in another one of our videos.
the tax historian's great. It's typically either, depending on what the customer needs, they would either get tax historian or SQL bridge first or second. Yeah. But a vision client with a tax historian module is a very powerful tool. Oh, yeah. And so if Corso is proposing some sort of package, you're going to have the vision, you're going to have the SQL bridge, and unless you're a super special use case, you're going to have the tag historian as three of the top first things that you're getting as part of any ignition package. Yep. And they're the first three listed on the website. And they as are. We are. That's how important out. they are. <laughs> so, yeah, that's tag historian. If you have any questions on that, let us know. You know where to reach us. Yep. And they tell me we should ask, so please remember to like, comment, subscribe, tell Alex he should be in some more videos. Thanks, everyone. We'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.